Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. And before our drama begins, we would like to suggest that probably you will like White King better than any other soap you have ever used. If you have a washing machine, listen. Get some White King from your grocer. Put some in your washer. Not so much, mind you, as the soap you've been using. Put in your clothes. Put in the water. But not so hot as the water you thought you had to have to get things clean. Then turn on the power. Run your wash through. And just see with your own eyes what happens. We try to make this radio drama thrilling, but honestly, what a thrill you'll have when you see clothes washed with this different kind of soap. Save on your soap bill. Save on your gas bill. Save on your clothes bill. You'll say, I love White King granulated soap. Frank Chandler, known in the Far East as Chandu the Magician, has been obliged to drop his search for the missing drawings in Cairo and even for Robert Regan. The precious emerald entrusted to Chandler by his teacher, the yogi, has been stolen by an Arab who has vanished into the Egyptian desert. As the present act opens, Chandler and the Regents, mounted on camels, have been traveling over the desert all day, following the route to the outlaw village. It is almost sunset. Chandu, the magician. I'll race you to that little hill, Betty. All right, if we don't get bucked off or whatever camels do. Don't get out of sight of the guides, Betty. We won't get lost, Mother. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I don't know how they do it. You're getting tired, Dot? A little. I'm getting used to the motion of the camel now, though. (laughs) You know, for a while this morning, I wondered if I could possibly stay on all day. I thought you were pretty quiet this morning. That wasn't the only reason. I was wondering about Abdallah. You didn't tell me last night he was coming with us. It's all right, Dorothy. I hope so. You're not still worrying about Betty. Even if she knew he was up ahead with the guides, she's furious with him. (laughs) You don't know much about girls of her age, do you? She's so overcome with what she calls the glamour of Egypt. And if she knew Abdallah had actually asked our permission to marry her, well, he'd be glamorous all over again, just as he was that first day in the bazaar. She isn't going to know he's with us. He agreed not to come near her. Well, I don't trust him. Look up ahead there. You can't tell which which one's Abdallah yourself. Now, can you? Well, no, but I can't trust him, Frank. And I don't see how you can. After all, he's worked for Roxaw for ten years. Well, I felt that way too, Dot, until I had that message from the yogi. Well? Besides, he's certainly on my side in the scrap we got into in Roxaw's room. Yes, but He took a chance of getting a knife in his ribs. Why should he do that if he wanted me killed? Well, the whole thing could have been put on for your benefit. What? You didn't know the other man. It, It was Abdullah who recognized him or pretended to. Oh, come now, Dot. If he wanted to lead us into a trap of some sort, there are many less complicated ways to do it. Well, it's... Not so unreasonable. What's to prevent Abdallah from just running away with Betty? All sorts of things. Well, I don't... Now, don't let this get on your nerves, Dot. Well, what better chance could he want than this? Abdallah hired the guide. Here we are, miles from Cairo in the desert. We'd never find our way back. Mm, As a matter of fact, I really don't blame you, Dot. I know you can't help being frightened at all the things that have happened since you left home. But if you begin to worry about things you can't help, you'll turn into a jellyfish in emergencies. And that's not at all like you. Well, I still don't think bringing Abdallah along comes under the heading of things we can't help. I told you. He knows where that outlaw village is. Yes, but... Look here. This trip's the best thing in the world to cure Betty of thinking those shakes are glamorous. When she sees them in their native village, she'll be all over it. Hmm. I'd be a lot more sure of that if I didn't remember I was exactly the same at her age. No doubt. Well, remember the crush I had on Valentino in the sheep? <laughs> How could I ever forget it? Now pull in your camel, Dot. Now look over there. 
No, no, there in the sky. Oh, it's the oasis. Oh, at last. It's a mirage. Are you sure? Well, it's as clear as can be. A big lake and palm trees and white houses. Oh, Bob and Betty ought to see this. Bob! That's odd. Is that actually a reflection of the oasis? But of course. Why, you know, I always thought that a mirage was imaginary. Oh, no. It's almost like a reflection in a mirror. Well, right here, Mom. Come here, you and Betty. What are you stopping for, Uncle Frank? The guys are going right on. Whoa, Mohammed. I wish I knew how to say whoa in Arabic. <laughs> what do you want, Mom? Look up there. It's a mirage. I thought you'd want to see it. An oasis in the sky. Well, where would a mirage be? Is, is that the oasis we're headed for, Uncle Frank? I hope not. Why? What's the matter, Frank? It's too far away. I never thought a mirage would look so real. How far away do you suppose it is? The oasis, I mean. Miles. They always are. That's just the trouble. But I thought Abdallah said we'd be there by sunset. He did. Oh, Uncle Frank, I told you you couldn't believe anything he said. It'd be just like him to send us out in the desert where there isn't an oasis for a thousand miles. Oh, don't be silly. That one can't be a thousand miles away. Well, it's too far to reach tonight, I know that. You wait here. But the guides aren't stopping. I'll stop them. You stay right where you are. You know, Mom, when you get over the other side of a hill, it, it's like being in the middle of the ocean. I know. Oh, I wish Uncle Frank had left us in Cairo. Why, Mother, aren't you having fun? Well, we're just in his way. And besides... He couldn't make it any, any better time without us, Mom. He said so. I know what Mother's thinking. Fat Abdallah. Well, I don't like him any better than you do, Bets. But Uncle Frank has to get the emerald box back. I bet his magic's no good without it. Don't you, Mom? I don't know, Betty. But I can't see why a pickpocket would take the emerald back to his village. He could surely sell it in Cairo. That great big thing? <laughs> He'd be afraid to. Mm, there could be a gem cutter in the village, though. And he'd cut it all up. You're always reading about things like that at home. Say, I wonder if that's what Uncle Frank's afraid of. He sure steamed up about it. No wonder. Remember what we heard the yogi say in the crystal that first night? He told Uncle Frank to guard the emerald with his life. Oh, I can't help thinking this may be just a wild goose chase. And while we're gone... You're thinking about Daddy. Yes, I am. Roxor could have arranged this whole thing so he could get your father out of Cairo. Did Abdallah say Dad was in Cairo? Was that what he told you after you sent Betty and me upstairs? No, no. Now, he said the last time he saw your father was with Roxor in Algiers. Mother, when was that? Oh, a long time ago, soon after the ship sank. I'll bet Abdallah knows where Dad is right now. Well, he swears he doesn't. He doesn't even know where Roxor is. Hmm. That Abdallah. Oh, Mother, you're shivering. Put on your sweater. Oh, you better put yours on, too, dear. Okay. As soon as the sun goes down, it's freezing. Listen. Am I hearing things, or is that music? You know, I thought I just imagined it. Where could Uncle Frank have gone? Oh, I see him right over there, coming up over the dune. Come on, all of you. The guides are putting up the tents. Are we just going to sleep out in the sand? No, there's a small oasis just over the dune. Is everything all right, Frank? So far, yes. Oh, I'm beginning to wonder how you get off a camel once you're on him. I hope he knows I'm just a tourist and not used to camels. One of the guides will help you down, Betty. Well, I'm just going to jump off. Well, a lot of good you'll be way out here with a broken leg. If I'm jumping off a camel into the sand, you must think my bones are full of jello. Frank, where's that music coming from? You'll see when we get to the top of the hill. There. Oh, it's just like a picture. A little fire reflected on the palm trees. Well, you'll have to admit this is glamorous, Mother. <laughs> All right, dear. I admit it. <laughs> Who are those fellows, Uncle Frank? Another caravan, Bob, camped for the night. I asked them to send their leader over here. Why, they must know their stuff. Finding a little oasis in the middle of nowhere. Well, they do. Mmm, something smells awfully good. I hope we can have dinner pretty soon. It won't be long, Betty. The cooking fires are lighted. Mm. I feel as if I hadn't eaten a thing for years. After all that lunch? Well, that was a long time ago. Now we'll get off here. Yukov! Andak! <sighs> hey, is that the way you get off, Uncle Frank? Nothing to it. <sighs> yeah, let me help you, Dot. Oh, wait until the camel kneels. All right. 
Ah, there you are. Just slide off now. Ah. Hey, you all right? Oh, yes, fine. Uh, well, that's it, Bob. Well, now, Betty, I'll help you down. Okay. Oh! Don't you feel funny and little? Yeah. <laughs> you can all go over there where they're putting up the tents. I bet we'll creak in every joint tomorrow. <laughs> Thy night be happy, friend. And to thee, peace. Which way does your caravan travel? To Cairo. Is there a message I may bear? No, no, it's not that. Have you seen a man alone on the route today? I was, Yasidi. At the rising of the sun, where two men are racing camels. One big and strong, like a man who tries his skill in fighting in the bazaars. Black of hair and... Which way were they going? Are they then... Thy friends? No, they're thieves. I follow them to bring back what they stole from me. I. Which way did they go? Into the desert. If thou would see thy goods again, follow them fast. I intend to. Peace be upon thee, friend. And upon thee, peace. Bob, you see that the men from your mother's place not there. <laughs> Precious time will he spend in the desert seeking the great emerald. And in Cairo, I shall sell it for the price of many camels and many wives. <laughs> drama has come to a close until tomorrow night. But there's drama and maybe magic in millions of homes where white king soap is used. Once upon a time, people thought they should buy two or three kinds of soap. One for washing machine and dishpan, maybe one or two for dainty things like lingerie and stockings. But more and more people discovered white king. The one and only one soap you ever need, no matter who you are, where you live, or what you have to wash. Your husband may be an engineer, or he may work in a bank. You may have sheets and pillowcases, no end to wash, or you may live in a hotel with no laundering problem other than your nylons. Listen to these wonderful words. White King gets out the stubbornest dirt. White King protects as with a caress the daintiest fabrics. Know what you'll say, do you? You'll say this. I love White King. Chandu, the Magician, is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Special musical backgrounds are by Corla Pandit. The makers of White King invite you to listen again tomorrow at this same time when the story resumes. Chandu, the magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.